Hi everyone, Gleb is here, and I have a simple Cypress end-to-end -end test. I'm adding a couple of to-dos, then I'm verifying there are two of them, finding the first one, clicking toggle button, and then confirming that the first to-do has class completed, and the second to-do doesn't have class completed. Well, we have a problem. The test is failing. If I click R and rerun the test, you can see that it mostly passes up to this command, but then it fails. So it did not expect the second to do to have class completed, but it does have class completed. Now, how do you debug a failing Cypress test locally? The first thing I do is I kind of look at every command to make sure that it passes for expected reason. So for example, uh, I find the element with new to do and I type there. I do expect it to type in this input box and it does it and it adds the first to do. Then it types the second to do. Yeah, it's passing for the right reason. There are two to do list items. We didn't have accidental items left over from somewhere. I can see that it finds the first to do item. That's correct. Finds the toggle element clicks on it, and something is suspicious right here. So if I click on this button, notice that we're still passing assertions, but I see that something is wrong during this command's execution. Because after we click on the first to-do item, both items somehow got completed. I think this is suspicious. And this is why it fails after a couple of assertions down the line in this test. So the second trick I usually do is that in my source code of my spec file, there is a Cypress pause command. Okay. So when I say this, Cypress will run up to that pause command and notice when it stops and the test is hanging, Application is right, right, right there. I can open DevTools, inspect the application at this particular moment, but I also have resume and next buttons. So I can step through the test commands one by one. So I confirm that there are two items, confirm the first command ran, then it found the toggle, and when I click on it, and I can see Right now, what has happened, I can open again DevTools, look at output maybe from my application, maybe there are debug statements. I can see that it's behaving. And then, okay, I understand what's going on and I can continue and let the test run. And in this case, fail. In addition to the pause command, there's usually, or oh, there's a second command called debug. Now, this is the Cypress command. And in order for you to actually see it in action, see it ran, but it didn't do anything, you have to open the DevTools, right? And run the test with DevTools open at that particular moment. And this command is just a utility command. If you look at the console, when this command stops, it just prints the yielded result from the previous command. So the previous command was typed and it shows what it was typing and which element it's typing to. So the debug is different from pause. Debug just allows us to see the subject from the previous Cypress command. Not that useful in this case. What is useful in this case is we can remove this debug and look at the source code inside the application. So we suspect when we click the toggle that something wrong is happening. So we'll go into our application code and I already have a toggle method in my app right here. So what I will do next, I will put the regular debugger statement, right? It's not Cypress command, it's a JavaScript debugger statement. So when I say this, Cypress doesn't usually watch my application source files by default, but when I rerun it, again, nothing happens. Just like with Cypress debug command, if you want the execution to pause, you have to open the dev tools and then run the test. So in this case, we're going to let it run and our application pauses at that particular 
uh, line, right? So the interesting thing about Cypress is because the tests run in the same window event loop as replication, at this particular moment, when we pause inside the application code, the test is paused. Vice versa, if we pause inside the spec code, for example, inside that then callback or inside that should callback, then the application code will be paused as well. And that makes it very simple to debug a failing test. So at this point, I can look at to do's, I can see that to do, um, to do's are updated. And in this case, well, I kind of know the problem, right? Uh, if you see here, we're actually flipping all to do's, and we should be flipping just the to do that we passed in. So I'll let it run, right? I'll let the test fail. I'll go back, I'll remove this debugger keyword because I know the problem, and I'll say, okay. When you want to flip the to do to toggle, then you want to return either uh, if you if, you, if it's really this one, right? We want to flip the completed flag. Otherwise, you want to just return the original to do. So I'm going to save it again. Cypress is not watching it, but when I run the test, now everything is passing. So this is how I debug failing Cypress test locally. First, I use the time traveling debugger to see if every command actually passed correctly and how the application behaved. Then, if I still don't understand what's going on, I will use pause command to stop my application and go step by step. That gives me a chance to inspect the application, look at the network calls. And then I will just use debugger keyword to stop my application or my spec at particular moment in time to understand what's happening. 